Hello everybody, welcome to Numa Life Church. We are so happy that you have joined us. Um, I'm Cornell and I will be sharing our message with you today. I have a lovely family of, we are four. It's me and my husband and then two awesome daughters. And the other day we were sitting at breakfast and we're listening to this prayer that somebody sent us. And halfway through the prayer, my three-year-old look, looks at me and she goes, why is this man struggling to walk? And we're like, huh? how do you know he's struggling to walk? It's just a voice. And she says, he, no, he's struggling to walk. And we're like, but why do you say that? And she says, he says, God, help me to walk. And so we kind of rewind it and we hear that he says, God, help me to walk in your ways. Help me to walk by faith and not by sight. Now, I did try and explain it to her and she didn't quite get it. So we just kind of stuck with, okay, Eva, the guy has a problem walking. So, but let us pray for God to help us as well. So thank you so much, Father, that we can be here together. It is so nice to be joined together as believers. And I, I pray, Father, that you would help us to hear your voice. And I pray, Lord, that we would feel your presence. Um, help us to walk in obedience to your word and not just that, but help us to understand your word. Father, thank you that we can trust your love. In Jesus' name, amen. And so I'm so excited to share this message with you guys. We are on week four of our message called In My Feelings. And I'm going to share about Moses. Now, for those of you who are not so familiar with Bible stories or Bible characters, Moses, according to me, had one of the hardest jobs ever. He had to take the Egyptians, not the Egyptians, the Israelites, out of Egypt. They were slaves and then journey for 40 years through the desert to get them to their promised land. Now, the story starts long before Moses. It actually starts where the Israelites are living in Egypt and they are doing very well. They're prospering, they're having lots of babies. And the king of Egypt is looking at all of this and he's starting to feel a bit insecure and he feels threatened. So he decides to make all the Israelites slaves and thinking that, oh, that would stop them from being so prosperous and fruitful. It didn't happen. He made them slaves. He oppressed them, but they just kept on having the babies. And so he then decided that when the new babies are born of the Israelites, they're going to kill them. And that is in that time that Moses is born. But Moses' mom comes and she um, like kind of hides him away for about three months. And then she realizes, oh, this boy is getting loud and people are going to hear him. So then she makes a basket, puts baby Moses in the basket in the Nile River. And then he kind of went off and he ended off at Pharaoh's daughter. And she took this baby, loved it from the get go, and she adopted him as her own. So we've got Moses is an Israelite and he's now growing up in Pharaoh's palace. So he was a prince of Egypt. So he had the best of the best. He had the best education, the best clothes, the best ride, you name it, he's got it. He probably even had his own slaves. Now, when Moses was 40, he, he knew that he wasn't uh, Egyptian. He knew that he was an Israelite. And so he decided that he's going to walk around a little bit between the Israelites amongst them and see how do they live, who they are, what's their culture. And then uh, he went out that day and he got a massive rude awakening because he came across a scene where an Egyptian was ill-treating an Israelite. Now at that stage, Moses knew, the Bible says Moses knew that he was going to be Israel's savior. How he knew, we're not sure. Maybe his mom told him or maybe he read a prophecy. We don't really know, but he knew. 
And so I think in that moment, he first of all saw the injustice towards his people. So he felt moved by that. But then maybe also in his head, he was like, well, I'm going to save them. So maybe I should jump in and help this guy. And when he did it and he tried to defend the Israelite, Israelite, he then killed the Egyptian. And then he kind of buried him under the sand, hoping that nobody saw it. So he walks um, the next day amongst the people again, but this time he comes across a scene where two Israelites are fighting against each other and, and having a disagreement. And he comes in and he's like, brothers, we shouldn't be fighting, we should be uniting. And then the one, the guilty one, of course, looks at him and goes, who do you think you are telling me what I should be doing? Are you going to now kill me like you did the Egyptian? And at that stage, Moses realized that everybody, first of all, knows that he killed an Egyptian. And second of all, his people don't really accept him as one of them. And rightfully so, he grew up very privileged in a, in a palace and they slaved off. And so that day he runs and he fleds into the desert. Um, he then meets a girl, meets a girl, and then he marries her, and he starts looking after the father's sheep, his father-in-law's sheep. And so he does that for 40 years, and for 40 years he learns how to look after sheep and how to shepherd them in the desert. And then he gets uh, uh, after 40 years, so he's now 80 years old, he one day finds himself on this mountain. But first, I want to let you think of what happened in those 40 years. What was going on in his head? He probably sat with a massive amount of disappointment. First of all, he moved from being a prince, having everything that he needed. He knew exactly what he was called to do. And now he's 80 years old, he's an old guy, he's in the desert, he's looking after his father-in-law sheep, it's not even his own sheep. Um, and he probably feels like, I was so sure about my future and I've completely missed it. And, um, but something amazing happens on that mountain. So he walks and he sees this burning bush and the bush seems to be on fire, but it's not burning out. So he goes closer to inspect, and then God speaks to him out of the bush, and God calls him by name, and he says, Moses, um, I am the God of your great, 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 great grandfather, fathers, um, and take off your shoes, because you are on holy ground, and I have called you, um, to take Israel, the Israelites out of Egypt into the promised land that I have got for them. And so uh, this is where I want to uh, start reading. And we're going to start re to read from Exodus 3 verse 10. And we're going to read all the way up to 4, Exodus 4 verse 15. Okay, so bear with me. It is quite a lengthy piece and I'm going to try my best um, to not make it feel so long, I might interrupt myself a little bit and then I also might change the wording a little bit so that it sounds a bit more 2020 and not 1000 BC. Okay, so we're going to read. I want you to keep in mind though that um, at this stage, Moses has been in his feelings for a very long time. So then look at his response towards God. So God says, Come now therefore, and I will um, send you to Pharaoh, that you might bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But, problem number one, Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? And God said, I will, will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you, that when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will serve me on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, problem number two, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers have sent me, and they say to me, 
Well, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me. Moreover, God said to Moses, this you shall say to the children of Israel, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial to all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, have appeared to me and said, I have surely visited you and I have seen what is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, the Amorites, the Parasites, all the Ites, to a land flowing with milk and honey. Then they will heed your voice and you shall come, you and the elders of Israel to the king of Egypt, and you will say to him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, have met with us, and now please let us go for three days' journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to our Lord, our God. But I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, no, not even by a mighty hand. So then I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in its midst, and then after that he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be that when you go, you will not leave empty handed. But every woman shall ask of her neighbor, the one who dwells near her house, articles of silver and gold and clothing. And you shall put them on your sons and on your daughters. So you will plunder the Egyptians. Then problem number Three, Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, The Lord hasn't appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, What is in your hand? And he said, A rod. And God said, Cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. And Moses did what all of us do when we see a snake. We become expert hurdle runners. So Moses fled off and then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand again and take it by the tail. And he reached out and he caught it and it became a rod again. This is that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, have appeared to you. And furthermore, the Lord said to him, now put your hand on your bosom. And then he, put, he puts his hand on his bosom. And then when he took it out, it was leprous like snow. And then God said, well, put it back into your bosom. So he put it back. And when he drew it out, it was restored like his other flesh. Then it will be that if they do not believe you, nor heed the message of the first sign, that they may believe the message of the latter sign. And it shall be that if they do not believe, even those two signs, or listen to your voice that you will take water from the river and pour it onto dry land. The water which you have taken from the river will then become blood on the dry land. And then Moses, fourth problem, says to, to the Lord, Oh my Lord, I'm not eloquent, neither before nor since you've spoken to your servant. I'm slow of speech and I'm slow to, in tongue. So the Lord says to him, who has made your mouth or who has made the mute, the deaf, the seeing, the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go and I will be with your mouth and I will teach you what you will say. But he said, he cuts through the chase. He says, oh my Lord, please send by the hand of whomever else you may send. So the Lord um, so the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well. And look, he is coming out to meet you. And before you've got another excuse, he will be glad in his heart to see you. And so that is what happened. The Lord used Aaron as Moses' mouthpiece. Okay. So we can see that Moses has gone from being... 
extremely confident to being extremely insecure and having some really real feelings, right? Um, first of all, his conversation with God is like, who am I? I, first of all, I don't belong to any people group. The Egyptians won't take me back because I killed one of them. My own people don't recognize me as one of them. Um, they already rejected me. Um, so I don't belong anywhere. Who am I? And, and also, I've just watched sheep for the last 40 years. I have not done anything amazing or I'm the leader of so-and-so. I'm just a normal oak. And this is how God responds. And he goes, um, he puts the focus on himself and he says, I am with you. I am the one that sends you. But then Moses goes on and he goes, well, I don't have enough knowledge. What if these people start asking me questions about you? Who do I say you are? I'm not a teacher. I, I haven't grew, grown up in the community. Um, why would they believe me? And then the Lord says, I am who I am. He puts the focus on himself again. And he says, you can tell them that I am have sent you. And so Moses goes and he says, well, what if I put myself out there and they don't even listen to me? What if, what if they look at me and they go, well, why would God speak to somebody who killed somebody? Why would God speak to a murderer? Why would God speak through a sinner? Like surely there'd be some, somebody more worthy or better to choose. Um, what if they say that I'm a liar and then the Lord does what all of us do after you've really tried to convince somebody with words that you know what you're talking about, then you start demonstrating it and this is what God does. So if I tell you, listen, I'm a really good arm wrestler and you don't believe me, I'm going to say, come down, let's wrestle. And God does exactly the same. He says, well, let me show you who I am. Let me show you your, you my power. And then he does the whole rod and snake and hand and leprosy and the water turning into blood thing. And then Moses is still not convinced. He then goes and he looks at himself and he goes, well, I've got a physical disability. I'm not a good speaker. Maybe he felt he wasn't very confrontational. Um, Maybe he hasn't spoken Hebrew in a long time. You know, when that Afrikaans guy walks up to you and he starts speaking to you in Afrikaans and you're like, um, I haven't spoken Afrikaans in a while. You know, that feeling. Maybe he felt like that. And, um, but we see that God again, he, he responds and he says, well, I've made your mouth. I will teach it what to say. I will help you. And then, then he just cuts the chase and he says, okay, Lord, please, 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 please send somebody else. I am not your man. I have tried this before and I, I can't do it. I failed when I tried to save the Israelites the previous time. Um, then God gets angry, but this is the beautiful thing. It's like, I'm sure God get, gets angry with us all the time when we are so stuck. But the beautiful thing is he stays so patient and he stays patient with Moses and he gives him a solution for his problem. He goes, well, you've got a brother who's a good speaker. Let's send him with you. And um, so we can really see that Moses has like a whole bag of very real and very understandable feelings. And the problem is that he's been walking for 40 years in it. So it feels so real, right? Um, and uh, a few years ago, my husband went through something very similar. Um, he is a guy who's just one of those natural leaders. He was captain of the class and then he was captain of the first rugby team and a prefect and like leadership positions which is kind of naturally come to him and uh, when it was time to start choosing uh, head boy and head girl 
he uh, people voted and then one of his teachers came to him and said listen uh, everybody voted you did win by the minority um, but we can't make you head boy because your academics is not as good as the other candidates the um, academics and so Andre just left it and then it came it became time to vote for head boy for the hostel that he was in and again the same thing happened he won with, with votes and so all the kids loved him and they all voted for him but they chose somebody else and two weeks into their term that head boy got expelled and so the teachers kind of came back to Andre and said sorry we made a mistake would you mind being head boy and then Andre found himself a little bit in his feelings and he said no so forward a little bit he went to varsity he studied human movement science at the University of Potchefstroom and um, his first year was really difficult um, academically so he quit and he started studying teaching and so he did that for two years but then at the end of those two years he also quit that and he immediately went into ministry um, so church ministry and so uh, he did that for 15 years he loved it it was amazing um, but then in year 15, we felt a really um, serious shift and a move that needed to happen for him. And so he quit ministry and then uh, started his own business. But the problem was he didn't know a lot about business. So imagine this. In his past, he's got all this evidence of failing evidence of you're a quitter evidence of you bad some you made some bad choices all these things were haunting him all these years and now on top of all of that it's that feeling of inadequacy because i have no idea how to start a business and andre really got stuck in that in all of those feelings um, and it took quite a while because with that came feelings of I'm not good enough, feelings of low self-worth, um, he felt even depressed and everything was just really negative. And he goes, um, and what happened is the Lord does two things for Andre. And I see similar things with Moses as well. First of all, the Lord sent people on his path to help him in this. People that says, hey, come on, I'm going to take your hand. We're going to do this. Somebody who says, hey, but I know a lot about business. This is what you're supposed to be doing. And then checking up on him, keeping him accountable, checking him, where are you at in your feelings? Um, so that was extremely helpful and then the second thing that the Lord does, did is he took the focus off of Andre and he put it on himself and he said Andre look at me I'm the one that will do it I am the one that's going to help you with this I am the one that makes you victorious and I'm the one that's got plans for your future and those plans are plans to prosper and not to fail. It is plans to have a life and life in abundance. And um, so we see, um, sorry, <laughs> um, we get reminded, we need to be reminded that when we are in those times of feeling so stuck in our feelings, that our focus needs to be to trust God's love and our focus needs to be to focus on God's love for us because perfect love drives out all fear and feelings can be really sneaky really sneaky and um, it, it, when you have them, they feel completely justified, right? You feel like you've got all the right in the world to feel like you are feeling now. But if Moses chose to stay in his feelings, 
We don't know if the Israelites would have been free. We don't even know if the world would have looked the way it looks today. And if Andre hasn't decided to step out of his feelings, then our family would have really struggled. And the people around us would never have known the gift that God has given Andre to work with people. And we would have never experienced it. And so I, my wish and my hope for you is that you would find complete freedom in living the life that God has planned for you. That you will have um, problems and all, feelings and all, that you would learn to live a full life and take the blessings that the Lord has for you and walk in the ways that the Lord has planned for you because those plans are good. It's plans that lead to life. All right, and so I'd really like to pray with you today. Um, wherever you are at, you can do it the way that you want to. But while we're praying, I want you to trust the Lord for two things. First of all, to show you those feelings that has made you a little bit stuck and is now affecting your future. And second of all, um, that He would show you the plans and the strategies on how to how to journey with those feelings in a healthy way. Um, so Father, so, 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 so thank you that you turn around situations for our good, that you work all things for our good because we love you and those are the plans that you have for us. And Lord, um, I wanna pray for those who have tried stuff in their lives and they were so sure that it was going to work out that they were so sure that this is going to be a good thing and it's going to work and then it didn't and that that fear of disappointment that fear of failure um, is has kept them from doing new things and doing the things that you've called them to do even if it is relationships that didn't work out even if it is a a business that failed or studies that failed. Lord, I pray that you would come in and show us that you use our disappointments not to break us down, but to build us up. And Father, then I want to pray for people that um, maybe this whole pandemic time has really shaken things up and it's changed so a lot and there's so much uncertainty around it. Or maybe that's just the season of the life, life that they're in. Uh, maybe things just look completely different from how it used to look. Um, Father, I pray and, uh, that that anxiety, those feelings of anxiety and fear and depression, that you would come and show people that you are the constant. You are the same today, tomorrow, forever. And that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And that the plans that you have for us is so good. That you love us and you would never want to let us down. Um, and Lord, for those of us that are stuck with feelings that's from our past. And we've kind of been dragging it along. And now it is affecting our future. Lord, I pray that you will set us free from those things help us to see it and help us to be free from it um, we pray this in jesus name amen